Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Wi-Fi 7. The areas I will cover include whether you truly need Wi-Fi 7 at home, if Wi-Fi 7 provides any real benefits, the use of Wi-Fi 7 routers and mesh systems, speed tests and performance analysis compared to Wi-Fi 6, and how you can enhance your connection speeds. Now, I have been using Wi-Fi 7 based broadband routers at home for several months now, and I will share my experience with you. Let's start with my current setup. I am using EE Home Broadband and have a subscription to the busiest home bundle, which gives me a maximum download speed of 1.6 gigabits per second, as well as upload speeds of 115 megabits per second. Please note that no one is sponsoring this video and my views are based on my own internet experience and testing at home. The router I'm using is the Smart Hub Pro, which is provided by my internet service provider EE, which is based in the UK. This router employs the Wi-Fi 7 standard and features tri-band wireless capability using the 6, 5 and 2.5 GHz radio bands. Additionally, it also includes four 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports. I also have three smart Wi-Fi Pro mesh routers that can be paired with the main Smart Hub Pro. This creates a mesh network which also utilizes the Wi-Fi 7 based wireless connection to communicate with one another and does also support a wide backhaul option which I'm going to test later in this video. On my plan, EE provided these extra routers for free at no additional subscription cost. For most modern routers, including the Smart Hub Pro, all you need to do is connect an Ethernet cable between one of your spare Ethernet ports on the Smart Hub Pro and the Gigabit Ethernet port on the Smart Wi-Fi Pro. Most routers I have used over the years automatically detect the Ethernet cable connection and switch to a wide backhaul. Make sure you also use a good quality CAT6 cable and remember that extended cable distances can also affect connection speeds. The EE router uses Qualcomm's Networking Pro 1220 platform. This is also the same platform used by many other routers just as the TP-Link Archer BE800 and Deco BE85. There is not much technical information about the Smart Hub Pro on EE's website, but the Qualcomm's website does provide details of what was potentially left out. This includes Ethernet port speeds of up to 10 gigabits per second, options for Bluetooth, and cellular connectivity for both 4G and 5G. EE does offer a Smart Hybrid Connect product that provides a 4G cellular data backup in case the broadband connection goes down. I did test a version of this when I was with BT Broadband in the past. My conclusion remains that EE Broadband, particularly where I live, provides a solid and reliable connection and I've never needed a specific internet backup solution. The broadband signal does go down at times, but this is very rare and it's usually back online within a few minutes. The 5G EE mobile signal is very strong in my area and it's easy for me to hotspot my mobile phone if I need data access through my PC. Let's move on to this router's Wi-Fi 7 capabilities. I live in a four-story townhouse with the Smart Hub Pro located in the loft. Strangely, this is where the ONT is located in this house. The ground and first floors each have a Smart Wi-Fi Pro mesh router. The lower ground cellar also contains the final mesh router. All routers are connected using a wide backhaul except the one on the ground floor. This is positioned near the driveway where vehicles and electric charger points use it to connect to the internet. The routers are all in individual rooms separated by walls, closed wooden doors and floors. Before we move on to further testing, it would be great if you could help my new channel by liking the video and subscribing. It really does help the channel grow and reach out to more people and I would be most grateful. The house is made of stone with wooden floorboards and concrete block internal walls. So how did Wi-Fi 7 affect the signal strength compared to Wi-Fi 6? Well, the iPhone 16 Pro Bax, which is a Wi-Fi 7 device, reported full signal strength throughout most of the house, which is great. However, the download speed of the iPhone varies the further you go from the router, despite the signal strength still remaining as full on the iPhone. However, if you turn the mesh off, the signal completely drops in the cellar and speeds are significantly reduced at ground floor level. Go outside of the house and the stone walls really do affect the signal. So how does it compare to Wi-Fi 6? Well, compared with the previous Smart Hub Plus, I'm definitely getting a stronger signal in the house with Wi-Fi 7 and better download speeds. 
the mesh network is still critical if you want to signal several floors down in your cellar. The mesh network is critical if you want a signal that goes through several floors. Even Wi-Fi 7 cannot penetrate more than two or three concrete walls. However, you will need the wired backhaul to get the best out of the mesh network, as it allows you to partially overcome the problem of signal degradation due to walls. At the moment, only my iPhone connects with Wi-Fi 7. The other devices connect using older standards. They can still connect, but they have a weaker signal, a slower download speed, as you would expect. You may find that appliances such as washing machines connect using Wi-Fi 4. Please note that Wi-Fi 4 does not connect using the 5 GHz bands, and you may need to set up some kind of compatibility network in your router. So what actual download speeds can you get using Wi-Fi 7? We know that if you use an Ethernet port, you can obtain the full 1.6 gigabits per second download speed provided by EE. However, can this speed be achieved by Wi-Fi 7? Let's take a look. So the answer is yes. This speed test was conducted on the first floor, connecting to the Smart Wi-Fi Pro mesh router on this level. In conclusion, is it worth upgrading to Wi-Fi 7 at home? Well, if you have devices that can support Wi-Fi 7 and need the higher download speeds wirelessly, then yes. In addition, it is slightly better at getting through a wall, but not if you have to go through several walls. Wi-Fi 7 can accommodate more devices due to its enhanced efficiency, Yet very few devices currently use Wi-Fi 7 in homes. For instance, as I've mentioned before, many household appliances still use Wi-Fi 4. The standard PlayStation 5 utilizes Wi-Fi 6, with only the Pro variant featuring Wi-Fi 7. For gaming and any other applications sensitive to latency, I would go for an Ethernet connection rather than Wi-Fi anyway. Wi-Fi 7 routers and devices are typically more expensive than their Wi-Fi 6 counterparts. You may also notice a higher subscription fee from your internet service provider if you opt for a Wi-Fi 7 router. They can also charge you an extra subscription cost per month as a rental payment for the Wi-Fi 7 device. This is particularly evident if, for example, you choose to subscribe through Zen Internet rather than E. However, regarding range, you may be better off sticking to your Wi-Fi 6 or 6E mesh network and investing in a wide backhaul if your router supports it. You could also add additional mesh routers to cover any dead spots. Let me know what you think. Every home is different, so it'd be great to hear of your experiences with Wi-Fi 7 in your home. Please let me know your thoughts below. It's great as always to get feedback from you, and I'll see you all in the next video.